the artist, the person who shares their most intimate qualities, who puts them all at the disposal of the audience, the one who transcends from his virtue and decides to share his trademark. Although some renegades and purists want to keep denying it, anyone who has ever watched Maradona play will be able to appreciate him as such. The man who transforms any place he has ever been to from on the pitch to off, from a special subnormal contact with the ball to a sudden gesture without it. That transcendent power inspired the whole world, which turned it into a painting, a narrative and a song. That side of him also shines, and today we will cover the inspirational Diego, the one who is part of popular culture, the artist. A football player, a man from the slums, an artist, a junkie, an avenger, a leftist, a pioneer, a playboy, a freak, a villain, a symbol of popular redemption. This is the story of Diego Armando Maradona's last year on this earth, his last year as a manager in Argentinian football. The last miracle of Diego. Who could ever stop Maradona? Many times, renowned artists spoke about their close encounters with the Argentinian star. Colin Farrell didn't stop until he kissed him, and the Gallagher brothers said that they couldn't keep up with his nocturnal ventures. Books, movies, series, documentaries, murals in every continent, churches and more than 100 songs dedicated to him, all of this makes the number 10 a cult figure and a popular icon of the last century. His charisma always helped him, like when he met Queen in 1981 while he was still El Pibe de Oro, Luis Miguel and El Chavo in Mexico, Joaquín Sabina, Julio Iglesias and Manu Chao in Spain. He met with Argentine artists in countless opportunities, starting with his warm relationship with the rockers Charlie Garcia and Andres Calamaro, and his brief but intense friendship with Cuarteto Idol Rodrigo Bueno. Pelé told FIFA in 2012, I was born to play football, just like Beethoven was born to write music and Michelangelo to paint. And Maradona answered, if Pelé thinks he's the Beethoven of football, I'm the Romwood, Keith Richards and Bono of football all at once because I have so much passion. Artists seek him out, drawn to his inexplicable magnetism like moths to a flame. Without any doubts, a meeting with the number 10 can be a starting point, the birth of a creation. This is well known by filmmakers who even today keep discovering stories to tell with Diego as the main protagonist. Musicians turn him into a song. Maradona has more than 50 songs to his name, of any genre imaginable, from all the corners of the world. And artists who portray his image on whatever canvas they can find. At times, Diego mimics himself, and there, in the spirit of genius and virtues, he manages to become one of them. But in the end, Diego is a muse. Art, artist, and inspiration. Once again, with his feet on the ground, Diego and El Lobo need to breathe in a new year, but an old tournament. Gimnasia hosts Vélez on the 16th match day, and this time the hug is with Gabriel Heinze, another former Argentine team player who shared South Africa 2010 with Diego. Christmas and the new year came with new reinforcements such as Brown, Gold, Mancilla, Agudelo, and Barrios, which gave hope to El Lobo but the first game of the year ended with a boring draw. And the best thing for any Maradonian fan is watching a nutmeg from left-footed Paradela. On the 18th match day, Gimnasia visits Parque de los Patricios neighborhood in Buenos Aires to face Huracán. He's welcomed by his former teammate and goal scorer Miguel Brindisi, and decorating the background is Las Pastillas del Abuelo, an Argentinian rock band who plays one of their hit songs, What is God, a tune written and dedicated to Diego. While Huracán has gone seven matches without a victory, Gimnasia is coming last in the averages. This is a final. Right at the beginning, Huracán struck first with a screamer from outside the box by Rodrigo Drupi Gómez. But Gimnasia is quick to answer, and newcomer Jonathan Agudelo ties the game. In the second half, Fatura Brown, their reinforcement keeper, became the star of the game. El Lobo managed to walk away with a draw, although they could have lost the match. The 19th match day is undoubtedly a final, and four minutes into the game, they are already celebrating. Golds scores the first goal against Patronato, a direct opponent in the averages struggle. 
But when it seems that Gimnasia is about to deduct some points from the other worst team in the relegation table, Avalos nets the equalizer in the 38th minute of the second half. Diego's face says it all. There are only four match days left and El Lobo has the noose around its neck. Although the reinforcements are all on the pitch, the situation doesn't seem to change. And since Diego's arrival, even though he got a couple of points, he couldn't manage to win two games in a row. He has an emotional and high-caliber match on the horizon in Rosario. And he also has to face none other than Independiente in Avellaneda. Although it's done well in advance, the match against Boca in La Bombonera is already beginning to pound in the team's hearts. The finals are approaching, and so is the end.